My name is Asia Samson and today on Baptism Overland, I'm going to show you the most waterproof way to route wires from the outside of your rig to the inside. And I wonder why there's not that many videos about this. Hope you've been following along because I got a brand new roof rack. Last week we installed the front runner slimline 2 half rack on my Jeep JKU. Man, it just looks really good and it was a lot easier to mount things to this rack versus what I had before. On my channel, you'll have seen that I have been DIYing a lot of my mounts because there were not that many accessories for the old rack that I had. And now with Front Runner, because I have so many accessories, I'm able to just buy mounts now without having to DIY so much. Now, one of the somewhat good things about my old roof rack, which was the Garvin Expedition roof rack, was that the way that that rack mounted to the vehicle were pillars that went down the side and you would see it on the outside of the vehicle. And the benefit to that was that anytime I wanted to put lights or anything electrical on the roof rack, then all those wires I would just have to run along the pillar, down to the bottom, and then underneath the vehicle, along the wheel wells, and then into the engine bay. So I never had to go into my vehicle for my wiring for anything on the roof. Put some loom, zip ties, and I kind of just zip tied it along the pillar so you could still see it, but it wasn't horrendous. The difference now, however, with the front runner roof racks, as well as the Rhino platform, if you have that one, is that those roof racks actually mount to the roll cage of your Jeep. But to get to those mounts, you have to drill a couple of holes into your beautiful Jeep hardtop and that was a very scary ordeal. Well, now that the roof rack is sitting up there with no pillars along the side, what am I going to do with the wires? You know, and I'm not the only one that has to go through this because a lot of you who may have forerunners or land cruisers or any other kind of rigs that don't have roof racks that mount to the outside, you have roof racks that mount to the top of the vehicle, which means that if you're going to put some wiring up there, you're going to have to find a way to go into the vehicle and hope that it does not leak. Now with Jeeps, I have seen people do that by bringing the wires out and then some of them went into the channel of the uh, window. They would just go into the channel of that window and then close the window onto those wires and I really do not like that at all. In fact, people who have done it said it's not really the best way because it could leak and you're crushing some wires there and it just looks messy because you just see wires kind of coming into your back window, I just did not want that look. And for many of you as well who are trying to route wires to the inside of your vehicle, you're trying to figure out a way, all right, what's the best way to do this? And you have to think about this stuff because you don't want wires just kind of flip-flopping all over on the side of your vehicle, like that's not good. But at the same time, if you're gonna bring it into your vehicle, you have to figure out a way to do it where it's not gonna start leaking when it's raining. I've seen some videos where people just drill a hole through the roof, put the wires through, and then use some RTV silicone to kind of seal around it but it just looked messy like that and it just didn't look clean and I don't know how long that's gonna hold up before it starts to actually leak on you so I turned my attention to marine products because it makes sense all these boats out there they have a bunch of wires going in and out of places and they have to find a way to seal up certain areas so those wires aren't getting wet because boats are constantly in water so I wanted to see what it is that they used and I found a product that many Overlander guys use as well but I've just never seen them do a video on it. Today, I'm going to introduce you to that product, show you how to install it and that product is called the cable gland. All right, so what exactly is a cable gland? Well, it is a way for you to bring wires in the most waterproof way possible to the inside of your rig or your boat or your house, this is really one of the best ways to prevent water from seeping in. Pretend this is the roof of your vehicle and you are trying to route wires from the outside to the inside. Your roof rack is up here, this is your roof, you have all these wires and you're trying to bring it into the inside of your vehicle. Well, you can just cut a hole, put those wires through and then kind of seal up the hole a little bit with some silicone but if those wires start moving, that silicone might start budging and then it might create a leak and before you know it, water is seeping through and it's dripping into the inside of your vehicle. So that's when you bring in a cable gland which will manage those cables and make it a lot better and seal it 
tightly. And how it works is, so let's say the hole is right there, you got your wires going through, you go ahead and put down this rubber seal first. And if you wanted to, you can put some RTV silicone on here. You don't have to go excessive with it because this is pretty tight already, but you drill this down and you put some silicone around the edges um, to seal it up. And then this goes on top of that. And this is the plastic base. And then that goes on top there. And then you use the provided screws that they have to screw this down to the roof of your vehicle. So now that's secure, your wires are coming out through here. You still have a hole in there, obviously. That's when you take this rubber plug. This rubber plug, what you do is you take these provided drill bits that they give you. It's weird, right? It's like, it's a drill bit for rubber and you put it on your drill bit, choose the right size of however, how many wires are going through that thing. And then you can drill about maybe three or four. I don't know how many you can fit on here, but one, two, three. I'm probably gonna do three. One here, one here, and one here. Feed the wires through. If your wires are already coming out and you can't necessarily fit it through this, you can also cut a slit to those holes, then kind of pry this open, put the wires through, close it back up, and then once you plug this in down like that, you're now creating a really, really tight seal. And then to hold all this in place, you then put your cover. Now, the cover, is super tight. Like I had to squeeze this in a lot, but that's good because that tells you that it's gonna prevent water from coming in there. Once you have it down, you screw the whole thing down. You screw this to this plate. They're on different screws, by the way, um, with the other bolts and that'll kind of tighten it down. If you see, it's actually different because you are screwing into your vehicle through here, but this is held down up here. So you have, Two different places that you're screwing into. That's just a lot cleaner on the roof of your vehicle versus just wires going into the vehicle. This cover actually comes in different finishes. You can get it in silver, you can get it in chrome, you can get it in white, and I think they even have anodized black. The only one that was available for me to get at the time was the silver, so I bought it and then I just used some Plasti Dip and this will just allow me to match the roof of my vehicle more so it's a little bit more discreet. Much better, right? So let's go ahead and install this now. I have everything marked where I want this gland to go and so all I'm going to do right now is just clean it a little bit with some degreaser, clean the area so that I have a really good adhesion point. Alright, next step is to add some clear RTV silicone. This is optional they say but I'm just going to do it just to be safe and I'm just going to put some around the base and that should help seal everything up when I press it down. Position it where I want, then just take off the excess from the sides of it. All right, with the chase light finally mounted to the roof rack and the cable gland mounted to the roof of the vehicle, it's now time to feed these wires through the roof. So that means I'm going to have to cut holes in the middle of this for the ends of this to fit through. Ouch. I know. More holes. But underneath here, I did mount a plastic bag. I kind of surrounded the area so that when I punch holes through, all the dust and debris will fall into that bag and not all over my interior. So let's start with some pilot holes. Okay, so this hole in the far left of me, that's going to be for my roof lights, which have not come in yet. I just wanted to get a hole ready for that. The middle one needs to fit this one through, and then the last one needs to be big enough to fit this through. So I'll probably have to dremel out a whole area here, because I can't fit my 7 8 bit through there. So let's start out with big circles. All right, so here's the cover of the cable gland. What we need to do now is punch the holes through. I've already done one just to get practice, uh, but what you're gonna wanna do is choose the drill bit that they provide you. Choose one that is 
somewhat smaller than the wires you're feeding through. Uh, so I chose this one because holding it up to the wires that I'm putting in, this one is slightly smaller. So you want it to be slightly smaller. If it's too small, then it's not going to fit. This will just bulge out and you don't want it to be too big because then you won't create a tight seal. So I got one in and put it on something that is a hard surface like this so this doesn't pop out on you. Now I'm going to take a knife and cut a slit through here so that we can open it up and put the wires in. So see, it opens. Let's do it on the other side. There you go. So now we just feed the wires that we have and put it through the holes we created. And that's how you get the tight seal. See, once it closes, it'll seal it up nice and tight in there. And then you can drop it in and go right here and cover it up. Nice, perfect seal. Did you learn something? I hope so. Because if you didn't know about this before, this thing is a game changer. It is just the most perfect solution for routing wires to the inside of your vehicle while keeping it clean, looking neat, and most importantly, waterproof. I mean, it's a much better solution than you just punching random holes to your roof, feeding the wires through, and then surrounding the hole with some silicone and praying to God that it doesn't leak on you. And when you do it that way too, you're making those wires permanent that if you needed to replace them later, you're gonna have to peel back all that silicone, cut out that wire, figure out a new way to get new wire in there and surround that with silicone. If I needed to replace the wires on mine, it's really simple. I just pop open the lid, take that rubber piece out, take the wires out, feed new wires through, and then grab a new rubber piece, cut holes in that one, unless it fits my old one put that rubber seal back on and then clamp it back down again and I am good to go. I mean, yeah, I too did use some RTV silicone, but I only used it on the base. And I did that because number one, I'm paranoid. And number two, I have never used a cable gland before and I didn't know how well it will hold up. And I just wanted a secondary measure in place. In fact, it actually rained today and I was sitting in the house thinking, oh my God, I hope this thing works because if it doesn't, then this video won't exist. And when it stopped raining, I went over there, looked inside the vehicle and it was completely dry. And I'm like, oh, Yes, it works. So that's why I'm recommending it to you that if you need to bring wires to the vehicle, use a cable gland. They're worth every penny and they're not even that expensive. They're like 20 to 30 bucks. So go grab one. It'll make your installs a lot cleaner. Speaking of the install, just a couple of notes before I let you go so you'll know exactly how it is. I did mine. The roof of the Jeep has two layers of fiberglass. And the way it works is you have the two fiberglass pieces sandwiched together and then they kind of come apart and then they go out for a little bit separated and they come back together again, then they go apart again. And that's what causes the ridges on your roof, both on the outside and on the inside. So what I did was I installed my cable gland in the area where the two fiberglass pieces are separated. That way when I put the cable gland on the top and I drill the holes through, those screws won't go punching through and you could see it from the inside. But the downside of doing that though is that I have to now punch two holes, right? One for the first layer and then one in the second and feed the wires all the way through. The top layer was not a problem. If you saw, I used a Dremel. It didn't really matter if it's messy or not and I know it looked really messy because the cable gland cover is gonna cover all that anyway and you're not gonna see it. You just need to make sure that you're punching a hole big enough so that all your wires can go through. If you have like really small wires then you have no problems. But if you have like certain connectors that I had to fit through there, I really had to dremel that thing out and get it through. Now for the inside of the vehicle, while I was dremeling the top, I went ahead and just dremeled out also all the way through so I can feed the wires through. But I'm not gonna keep it that way because it just looks messy. Like you just see this raggedy hole on the inside of my vehicle and that that's not clean at all. So what I did was I took the Dremel and put a wheel on it and I kind of just cut out a square. It's not the best and I'm sure there's a better solution out there, but for now it works. Anyway, that's it. That's the setup. That's all I had really to share with you today, but I figured I would share it because I'm sure there are a lot of people trying to figure out how to get wires to the inside of their vehicle and didn't even know products like this exist. 
existed. Sometimes you kind of have to step outside of your own community of stuff and look at products that are being offered in other areas that might work for your application. So if you found this video informational, then please make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel. Also maybe consider following us on Patreon and supporting us there as well so that I can continue creating content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson and I will see you next time. Thank <music> you.